And so we go to a game six. I would say this was the third game this postseason for the Celtics in which they have this moment where they just look so much better than the other team that I ask myself, why doesn't this happen all the time? It was mainly in the third quarter where they scored 41 points and they looked like a team that's really big and athletic and has a million guys who can dribble and shoot and they can suffocate you on one end and then convert on the other end. This was the third time that happened. The second time it happened was earlier in this series and the other one was the blowout against the Raptors in game, whatever it was. So what happened in that third quarter for, to allow the Celtics to do that? I mean, this is going to sound really basic, but I think they just played defense better. I don't even know if it was a specific game plan adjustment. Maybe they switched a little bit less, but it just seemed like they did a better job of closing out on guys. They did a better job of staying, staying in front of guys. I mean, in the third quarter for Miami, the only things I can really remember them getting that were easy were Dragic beat Grant Williams on a switch one time. Jimmy beat Tatum on... It was a screen, but I think he rejected the screen. And I think Bam might have had a couple of his like 12-foot jump shots or whatever, where he rolls and then it's a bounce pass. And he's got a little bit of space to get it up over. It was Tice in the third quarter, mainly. But besides that, it, nothing was really coming easy for Miami at that point. And, and again, I think the Celtics just had this moment of like, oh, wait a minute, we're all like really big and versatile defensively besides Kemba. You know, we can give these guys problems. And in the sense of like, when it's Hero and Duncan Robinson moving off the ball, they just stuck with them a little better than they did in the first half or through, I mean, definitely the last game if we want to talk about Tyler Hero. Now, with that said, I do think Duncan Robinson, he definitely had one three in the third quarter. I mean, we could talk about the threes now. Miami shot 19% from three. That certainly helped the Celtics out, no doubt there. And I think there was one of them in the third where Duncan Robinson had a three. I mean, he missed eight threes, so there was probably more than one. But there was one specifically that I remember where he took it off of his normal off-ball action. And the contest was solid, but that's sometimes not good enough against him. And he missed it. It was one of those moments where it's like, oh, this is probably turning the Celtics' way right now. But I think the Celtics also did a better job of just kind of shrinking the floor and packing the paint a bit on Miami's everything, to be honest. It seemed like the only time that Miami got something going was when they were able to just isolate somebody. But when they started doing all of their stuff and trying to get Tyler Hero, those pull-up mid-rangers off of BAM handoff plays and stuff, it just seemed like the Celtics did a good job of just putting as many defenders in the middle of the floor as possible and then closing out to the shooters. Now again, they, they were lucky. I mean, Crowder, for all of the amazing shooting that Crowder was giving Miami up until this point, it's suddenly gone. And if he goes 3 for 6 from 3 tonight instead of 0 for 6, then could be a different game. But I thought that's what the, the main thing was in that third quarter. It was that, and then if we talk about the other side of the floor for the Celtics, where we talk about what Miami could have done differently in this game besides just hopefully make some more shots, I felt like with the Celtics, they had this sort of mentality against the zone in this game that I feel like they haven't had up to this point, which was like, oh, wait a minute, we've got it. Why did this thing give us problems in the first place? For one, Daniel Tice was more of a threat. I had a tweet which, it's not as if I'm the only person who said this, but I did have a tweet the other day where I was like, man, it would be cool if the Celtics had a center who Miami had to care about a little bit. And, you know, in the first half, that was Cantor, but we're mainly just talking about the second half here. And Tice, he had a free throw line jumper that went through. He had a floater that went in as well. He was feeling himself and he took a three, which I was not a fan of. But if they're going to give him space in the middle of the floor in that zone, then that's how you beat it. You just take those 12, 13 footers, and if you make a couple of them, then what happened later on in the game? Bam was playing up on Tice, and then it led to, I don't remember exactly what, I think it might have been a Marcus Smart foul on a drive or something when they ran a screen. I think it was like Marcus and Tatum or something like that. So that works. The other things they did against the zone was they just had Tice set screens all the time. And really quickly, they didn't 
stare at the zone for a few seconds and be like, what are we going to do now? It was immediately, Tice, you go up, set a screen, because even in a zone, you still need someone to kind of play one-on-one man defense up top against, it was Kemba most of the time. And so Tice just screens for that guy, and suddenly the other defender who would typically be there with the guy guarding Kemba to sort of close off the top of the key, well, that guy now has to help, or really that guy just has to decide in a split second, what am I going to do here? Am I going to help on this drive because now Kemba's got some room because Tice just screened the other dude off? Or am I going to worry about the shooter who I'm kind of guarding, not kind of guarding because it's a zone, right? And it just seemed like the Celtics got to that so quickly in this game. And it was a good sign. It honestly seemed like they were disrespected by the zone. And I say that because while they did do a good job against it in Game 3, the way they did it was through more quote-unquote graceful basketball. Whereas in this one, it was literally... Okay, screw your stupid zone. We're going to run a screen up top because we just want to. You guys got to figure it out. And Miami did not figure it out. It was Kemba Walker pull up threes. It was action off of the screens. And that kind of got them going. And then it was also a whole lot of Jason Tatum free throws. He had 14. And there was a stretch in the third where he just looked totally unguardable. Where... If he was going one-on-one, if he was going in transition, if he had a handoff, if it was a screen up top, Miami just couldn't do anything against him. What's the option there? I mean, you can try to go at him super, super hard on those drives. I think they had some success with that before, but again, I also think the Celtics did a better job of breaking the initial defensive assignments of the zone, and then they got Miami scrambling a little bit more as opposed to them kind of making Tatum dribble into the zone and again I think they mainly did that through attacking the middle of the floor which is the one spot that is left open because of what Miami was doing besides that I mean Jalen hit some threes Kemba hit his pull-ups we got a good not spectacular not bad Marcus Smart three-point shooting game which is really weird it seems it's either amazing or it's terrible Uh, he was two for five from outside and he, he also had uh, a few of the assists that I thought really did a good job of going against Miami's zone. And he had a couple of assists to Tatum. One in particular that I remember that led to a Tatum 3. I feel like the only option for the Celtics moving forward is to play the main dudes a whole lot of minutes. I mean, you look at Miami, right? Tonight, Hero played 20. Iguodala played 19. I don't think the Celtics have that luxury right now. I mean, Grant Williams, Wanamaker, Cantor, I mean, you're going to have to play them at least sometimes, especially if guys are getting in foul trouble, which happened with Kemba tonight. But I think you just, you really got to lean into the main six guys right now. And I think when you don't have Tyson there, you might just have to go to the small lineup, which Brad did go to pretty quickly into this game. I don't think he went to it much in the second half. He didn't really need to. Because I don't know if Miami is going to allow you to put Cantor on the floor again. I mean, they did go at Cantor in screens, and he held his own enough. So, maybe you can still get away with Cantor a bit, but I don't know. I feel like with Spolstra, like, you throw that type of thing at him once, and he knows moving forward, all right, if, if Cantor's in the game again, we got to force him to move laterally. I think with Cantor, weirdly enough, I think if you attack him in a line drive on a pick and roll, that probably gives him a slightly higher chance of defending it just because he's basically just backing up as opposed to if you run those bam handoff plays and you're asking him to kind of do a little bit more and then I think you can really take advantage of him and I don't remember if Miami really did that. I think they mainly just screened at him every single time which, um, you know, with a defense as good as uh, the Celtics, they can figure out ways around that. Like I said earlier, like really condensing the floor. I mean, look, Brad Stevens had a good defense with Isaiah Thomas playing 35 minutes a game. The guy knows how to hide bad defenders. So anyway, for Miami moving forward, I mean, one, you just hope the threes go in. They shot 19%. Number two, I think they, I mean, I've basically said a version of this each time and I'm going to say it again. At a certain point, you just got to let Jimmy Butler go off, you know? 
And I, I think part of that's on him, part of that's on Spolstra. But in a game like this one, with a guy like Jimmy who can draw contact as well as he does, sometimes you just need to get to the free throw line a whole lot. And Jimmy was one of the best in the league at doing that this season. Granted, the regular season was like nine years ago at this point. And I think Miami just needed that, you know? And whether that's attacking Kemba or honestly just doing more straightforward pick and roll sometimes. I mean, I mentioned earlier there was one play where Jimmy beat Tatum on a one-on-one. Or last game there was one play where Jimmy beat Jalen on a straightforward line drive. I mean, at a certain point you just need your guy to be the guy. And I get it, Jimmy... He averaged 20 a game this year, and I mean, hell, when this whole thing started, I remember saying, I think Jimmy wants to be a little bit more of a pass-first guy. That's cool, but we need the pendulum to swing a little back into the direction of, give me the damn ball and let me go to work sometimes. So we'll see if that happens. We'll see if Jimmy takes that on. There's a chance they won't need to. I mean, they've had success, clearly, without needing Jimmy to do that, but, you know, just, just compare that to Tatum. Tatum took 22 shots, and he also took 14 free throws. I mean, if the Celtics were going to lose this game, it would not have been because they did not get their best guy the ball. He also played seven more minutes than Jimmy for whatever that's worth. So there's that. Um, The Dragic, bam, pick and roll, I feel like it can still work. So we'll see if they make that an emphasis as well. The Celtics were fortunate by Iguodala. Missing some threes. I am still scared that Iguodala is going to have one game where he goes three for five from three. So we'll see with him. We'll see how many minutes he gets. And also, I should mention Jalen. He continues to be great in this series. I mean, he's not handling the ball as much as other people are. I think if I took a look at touches per game and average seconds per touch and all that stuff in the series. I wouldn't be shocked to see that Jalen was behind Tatum, Kemba, and Marcus Smart. But whether it's, you know, shooting the the threes that he's getting in the flow of the offense or finishing in transition, and I mean, he had three offensive rebounds tonight as well. Uh, Part of me thinks Jalen's been the Celtics' best player of the series. So yeah, game six is going to be something. I am not going to be home to watch it. So I might have to do the voice recording on my phone, which we'll see how that goes. But yeah, game six, 